Today I'll be doing a full tier list of all cards currently in Boom Arena and obviously S tier will be the most broken cards and F tier will be the cards that kinda require a buff in order to be viable. And we're gonna start with Apes which is a pretty solid win condition in this meta. I'm gonna rank it as an A tier card because there are many decks that they can be utilized in, they are very versatile and uh, I mean there's a a lot of splash going right now in the meta but they still fare very well like cards like Dark Knight aren't as prevalent because of the Viking being the go-to pick for many players and that's why Apes I think will be in A tier so we're gonna hop into Archers I actually think the Archers are very solid right now I'm gonna put them in a B tier they're not strong in any sense there are many players that are playing like defensive decks like machine gun or digger and archers absolutely find themselves to be very good pick in this decks but they're not like game breaking or anything if any i think they are better alternative to the archers but this card is definitely solid and you can definitely use it and now we're gonna jump to the bullets and i actually think uh, they they are called arrows here but we know it's the bullets uh, I'm gonna actually think that it's the S tier spell in this game. Bullets are so very versatile, they are countering many key cards such as archers. They basically counter a uh, all the fawns, all the devils, th that good stuff. Uh, they counter bomb girl which is like one of the one of the uh, any good support units in this game and bullets and blitz kill also a necromancer and helicopter so that's some interactions that you have to know and I think that makes bullets very versatile it can pretty much fit into any deck I am a huge fan of this card and that's why I'm gonna put it in the S tier they are not like broken or anything but they are pretty much meta defining right now so next card will be balloon I actually will put balloon in a C tier because while balloon is like my uh, very uh, good choice like I like to play with balloon many people just run buildings some people are just running cyclone and those are like two biggest counters to balloon if your opponent has either of these you'll have a very hard time that's why I think it's not a good meta for the balloon but statistically this card is very well rounded and absolutely can be used so we're gonna head to the blitz and Let's, I don't think I've seen very often outside the Viking Bridge spam, but since it's in a Viking Bridge spam, it has to be at least in a B tier because, well, Viking Bridge spam is pretty much a meta deck nowadays and and so everyone uses it. Although there are people that are subbing Blitz for Bullets or Cyclones, so like, I think Blitz still deserves a B tier just because of Viking Bridge spam. I think I would put it in C or D tier if that wasn't the case but yeah there we have the blitz will uh, synergize with viking well that's why it's in a b tier so next up we'll have a bomber and i think bomber is on the i i don't actually know where to put it i'm gonna put it in the c tier with the balloon it's not like meta isn't good for the bomber it's just bomber is pretty very average card that pretty much can fit into any deck but at the same time it can be replaced by pretty much uh, more expensive alternatives but the alternatives that will get more value over time so for instance archers are on the very same side as a bomber but I think I've seen more players using archers than players using bomber and that's why I'm gonna rank bomber lower oh one th more thing to mention is that I'm not gonna be ranking the cards uh, within the tier it's gonna be like a very general tier so like uh, it looks like the order within the tiers uh, will be alphabetical because like cards are sort of alphabetical so yeah bomber will be in the C tier because it's pretty good right now I mean it's good but uh, it's not that common that's why he's gonna be where he is so next up will be bomb girl and I'm gonna actually rate a bomb girl as a a tier unit and uh, my reasoning is is that if you don't have bullets you're pretty much uh, gonna have a hard time against bomb girl because like 
Flying Bomb and Poison both give a negative trait and uh, since the Bomb Curl is usually uh, seen in Steel Bait, they pretty much rely on taking that uh, you taking that negative trait so they can pretty much pressure you with more Swarm cards and and Bomb Curl also is uh, seen outside of the Steel Bay. There are many wild decks, like some cheese decks with Bomb Girl. For instance, like there's a uh, even Brute Balloon deck with Bomb Girl. There are some uh, more of a control decks. I genuinely am a fan of this card, and I think the biggest uh, counters to a Bomb Girl right now is Bullets because it's like 100% certain. Second is Rolling Steel, but Sometimes you don't have a range with Rolling Steel, so you'd love to have bullets instead against Bomb Girl to fully counter her. So yeah, that's why I think it's gonna be in the A tier uh, unit, because it's very strong in the current meta. And next up we'll have a Bomberman. Bomberman is pretty much only seen in a default deck, so I'm gonna put it in a D tier. However, it is still very useful in the decks that it is used in, because like... Uh, nobody uses Bomberman, but people that use Bomberman kind of know what they're doing, and the reason why Bomberman is, is pretty weak is because Piercing Archer is very strong at the moment, so that's why I think just Bomberman is completely outshined, and for basically one mana less you can get the same result, plus you have a, a secondary win condition, that's why I think like Bomberman is... Uh, pretty outshined by Piercing Archer, but has his niche and uh, in the decks uh, which are like uh, rely on one f uh, anti air, it can uh, fare very well. For instance, there's this Apes deck with one anti air, there's obviously Bomb Skeleton uh, Super APQ where you can run him. It's uh, way, way less common nowadays, but it still can appear and still pretty effective, so I'm not gonna put it in F tier because I don't think Bomberman deserves a buff right now. So, we're gonna go to a Bomb Skeleton. I think Bomb Skeleton is pretty much on the same uh, side as a Bomberman. It's very rarely seen in a uh, top ladder uh, just because of the Viking uh, presence. Like, everyone right now is using Vikings, so obviously tanks will be on the weaker side. And the same thing is with Bomb Skeleton, because if it was the Viking with like support cards, Bomb Skeleton could have been a good counter meta, but it is a bridge bomb, and unfortunately Bomb Skeleton doesn't fare well against bridge bomb, so I'm gonna put it where it is in a D tier with a Bomberman. I actually think that Bomb Skeleton could have received a slight buff because it was harshly nerfed in the past, but at the same time I don't know what this buff could have been, so I'm gonna just put it in a D tier for now. Next up will be Bomb Tower, and I actually think a Bomb Tower is like the second best building in the game, uh, just behind the mortar, but it's just my uh, personal opinion. I'm gonna put it in the A tier because it's like the A tier building. I'm gonna actually put three buildings into the A tier because they're just absolutely busted. And well, I've already mentioned two of them, but Bomb Tower is like my favorite pick if your deck pretty much lacks defense. So if you're building like a cheese deck, you kinda have uh, all the offense, you just slap a Bomb Tower and suddenly you pretty much can defend many things. So yeah. if Sometimes you don't want to have a building in the deck in the first place, but Bomb Tower is a very good choice and I think like it deserves at least in the A tier spot. So next up we'll be having Cannon and Cannon actually I think is a B tier building because well it it costs less than a Bomb Tower but has way less HP. It cannot do a splash damage, has okay, has a way more DPS, but at the same time like a Bomb Tower kinda does way better job at having HP than a cannon with a damage because like ma many people just uh, don't play uh, some units alone so bomb tower always gets value while cannon well cannon gets the most value if it counters only singular troop if uh, two or three troops push the lane bomb tower is already a better pick so like in comparison between these two out Nine times out of ten, maybe eight, uh, would love to have a bomb tower instead of cannon, so that's why it's in on the B tier. Also, cannon still very decent, so I would absolutely not cross this building out if I were to build a deck. 
Next up we'll have a candle wheel and candle wheel I would actually put in a F tier because uh, no, nobody uses it. There are better alternatives. For what it does, it's pretty mediocre, it's pretty much gunner for one mana less. And unlike Bomber, it doesn't have like its niche or gimmick, it's pretty much outclassed by its representatives in every shape or form. And for this same mana cost, you can have basically have footmen which are way better at what can wheel is doing, unless you're like going for a super niche cheese in which like can wheel exists. But these decks aren't even in top ladder, so I'm not gonna include. I actually think a can wheel requires a buff. Next up, we'll have Cyclone, which I think is a B tier card because like Cyclone isn't strong. But uh, it is very versatile card, so I think the uh, the versatility alone will carry it to the B tier. But at the same time, I don't think the Cyclone uh, is strong right now. Uh, it's very hard to pull a Super Ape to a Viking Tower with it. It's um, more effective against like a uh, big pushes, but like it's pretty much the perfect purpose of Cyclone to pull things together so the splash can take it out and it is very commonly used so I'm gonna just keep the Cyclone in a B tier but I don't think it deserves A tier because there are way better spells to be used. Next one we'll have a Dark Knight and I'm gonna put a Dark Knight in a I think I'm gonna put it in a C tier just because of the Viking prevalence. Dark Knight is a very good choice if not the if the Viking wasn't there, like Dark Knight was usually B tier or A tier card, uh, depending on the meta. But right now it's just falling off so hard because if you if you face like Viking in 30% of your games, you're gonna have a very hard time to maintain your win rate. So yeah, for this reason, I think I'm gonna just keep it in the C tier. Next one we'll have Devils and. Devils are very good card. I'm gonna put them in a A tier because they are very versatile at what they're doing. They're very cheap. They pretty much get the job done unless your opponent has bullets and th that's it. I think Devils very solid card. I definitely recommend you stopping them into your deck if you have if you have a spot left. Next one we will have a Devil Heart and unfortunately Devil Heart will be way lower than the Devil's representative because of the relevance of the bullets. Like bullets are having a even trait against Devils, but against Devil Heart is just straight a positive trait and if your opponent has bullets in hand you cannot play this card uh, unless you like will get the value instantly. So Devil Heart will be in a D tier. I don't think it's F yet, but is very close to it and uh, right now there are not many players that use Devil Heart instead except like three gunner players with this like three gunner bait deck it's pretty decent there but other than that Devil Heart is just not good and that's why I'm gonna leave it in a D tier. Next one will be looking at the digger and I'm gonna put a digger in a C tier. So digger is a, a very consistent win condition if uh, if the fact was that uh, his placement would be kinda unpredictable, but unfortunately Digger is very predictable and most of the time you can just catch it. There's pretty much only one gimmick you can do with Digger in its going in front or behind the tower and that's pretty much the only way you can juke your opponent to miss uh, your Digger. But other than that, I think it's very easy to catch and if your opponent has Cyclone, you even cannot do that because once your opponent uh, activates the Viking Tower, and obviously you can activate both with frontal spot and with the backward spot, you'll be getting way less damage with your next diggers upcoming in the entire game. So that's why it's gonna go into the C tier. So next one we're gonna be having a Drunker, and Drunker I think is a B tier card. And the reason for that is that Bridge Spam is pretty relevant, and Drunker deals pretty well with a uh, cards like Thief and Ghost and archetypes like a General or a Drunker Loon don't do very well but the card itself I think is pretty decent and I would say even underrated like many people don't realize but if they were to put a Drunker in the bridge 
their bridge thumb with Viking, I think this deck would be very dope. And yeah, I, do, I just don't think that people are experimenting with decks like that. So I'm gonna just leave it here for debate. I don't think it's like overpowered or anything, but it's definitely a good pick in current meta. Next up we'll have an Earthquake and Earthquake will be going to a to a C tier. So Earthquake I think is a below average spell for the reason that uh, it doesn't kill cannon. I think that's pretty much the only reason that Earthquake is that low because if it were to kill the can it I would put it definitely in A tier but this interaction kinda needs to be fixed because if you're playing Super Ape with Earthquake you kinda need to get kills on your opponent's cannons because it's 7 against 3 trait. And if you predict your opponent's anti-EQ spot and you waste EQ to kill the scan, you should uh, you should uh, be able to get the kill. And instead, like, can will survive with 1 HP. And usually it's like 2 or 3 more seconds that Super Ape spends in... Uh, uh, spends uh, the time in one place and it's like... Two or three more seconds that your opponent can easily counter this super ape so i don't think it's just a good deal and that's why earthquake will be in a c tier next one will be explore and i think the explorer will be going to the f tier because except for super ape 2.6 it's not uh, being played anywhere i've tried recently to make a deck with explorer which was like a balloon digger deck with lightning and it was pretty nice it even counters the meta but it's like a very niche deck and i think that swordman or even steel hammer would work better in this deck anyway so except for 2.6 explorer is pretty much uh, useless right now and it's pretty much the meta circumstance because if the meta was uh, let's say bait i think explorer would be way better but since it's a bridge spam like explorer won't be getting uh, pretty much value against anything except like viking Ex against viking explorer actually gets a lot of value but uh, no one pretty much uh, nowadays gets the viking alone at the bridge so uh, yeah explorer pretty much uh, unusable in this meta and i think it deserves uh, some kind of buff Next up will be having Fonts, and I think Fonts is like the best Swarm card in the game. I think even better than Devils because they are cheaper and have more DPS. So they're gonna be having S tier. If you don't contest the Fonts, they're gonna just deal so much damage against your ground troops. They uh, fully can't, I mean, they counter a Super Ape only getting one hit on, which is like brilliant. If you can get away with playing Fonts as a heavier deck, you just got a plus two trade for basically doing nothing and your opponent cannot punish you for that because he just played your win condition and yeah i think just phones are very well rounded uh, card that you can pretty much use in any deck that's why we're gonna be at the s tier next one would be uh phone cake and i'm gonna be actually rating phone cake in a c tier i actually was wondering if it was worth uh, throwing it into the d tier but uh I think I'm gonna restrain myself from that because it's kinda a biased opinion. Uh, Phone Cake is pretty weak right now because you can fully counter it with Fire Tiny and if your opponent has a Fire Tiny it's pretty much game over for you if you, your only win condition is Phone Cake or like bait related stuff especially like I like to play Super Ape EQ with Mortar and this deck pretty much 100 O's any bait deck so yeah. Phone Cake is definitely not the best right now, especially because they are tiny, but also there are many players that are just okay with sucking some keg damage and going for the counter push, so I don't think the bait is in the best spot right now. I think like Bomber Girl is doing fine, but bait, uh, not really so, so I'm gonna just put the Phone Cake in the C tier. Phone Horror though, I think is a very solid pick and I'm gonna put it in the A tier, very versatile card. Not that good as phones because like phones deal almost as much uh, DPS as the phone heart for just one mana less and still dies to the same type of spells. So phones definitely better, but phone heart is a very good alternative, especially if your deck struggles against air. These three stone phones can really sometimes make the difference, especially against decks like Devils or uh, even yeah even against T Rex like. 
Von Horde is pretty okay against that. So we're gonna go uh, to the next card, which is a Fawn Hat, and I'd love to ra raid the Fawn Hat uh, in a B tier, but since it's uh, pretty much the most used building in the game, as at the time of the recording in the top ladder, I'm gonna have to unfortunately put it in the A tier. I'm not gonna put it in the A tier because uh, I think the buildings are generally overpowered and they deserve like their own rank, but since we are rating cards, uh, I'm gonna just keep the phone hat in a A tier. It's not that good as a bomb tower in my opinion, but many people think otherwise, like especially people that are building deck and uh, last second realize they struggle against air, they just uh, slap the phone hat and don't have to think about it anymore because as for now, phone hat is just the best air counter period. So that that's why I think it deserves A tier because it's singly single-handedly uh, counters a flank robot and balloon. So next up will be Fawn King and I'm gonna put a Fawn King uh, in a C tier because I think Fawn King is a very decent card but uh, well uh, it's only seen in pretty much Brute decks or uh, Dark Knight decks and both of these archetypes are pretty weak against uh, Viking currently so uh, you can obviously have some success, you can obviously tr trick these archetypes into playing the viking on the wrong lane and then you just counterplay on the opposite side, that was always the case. But it's not easy to play as a fawn king nowadays because people are either playing a defensive deck which usually deal well with fawn king or a viking bridge spam which, uh, well fawn king has a some good moments against this, but if your only response to a viking like let's say it's phone king, you're gonna be having a hard time, that's why I think I'm gonna put a phone king in a seat here. So next up I'm gonna be having a fire tiny and I think fire tiny is a very underrated card, I'm gonna put it in the A tier because I think putting it in, in a S tier would be some kind of over exaggeration because well Fire Tiny is good, it definitely has this free interaction against Fonkek, it definitely counters many swarms and is very versatile card, it gets pretty much a positive trade no matter where you play it, uh, it is also key uh, for certain matchups and yeah, I think Fire Tiny is very well rounded card and certainly I think I it's currently, as the time of recording, the best Tiny in the game, I'm gonna leave it in the A tier for now. Next up we're gonna be having a flying bomb and I think a flying bomb is a B tier spell and the reason, actually no, place in a B tier, yeah I have to throw a flying bomb in a A tier. So my reason for the flying bomb being in A tier is because it's very versatile, it's pretty much good in almost any deck and and that are, those are pretty much the reasons why the flying bomb is good. There's no reason not to use the Flying Bomb, if you're using the Poison, you usually can use in the same spot Flying Bomb and vice versa. And since these spells are pretty much dominating the meta, like recently we had the Boom of Bullets, but apart from that these two spells were pretty much always like competing for the spot of uh, the best big spell in the game and that's the case this time as well, so Flying Bomb definitely landing in the A tier. Between these two, I think it's my favorite <coughs> because I'm not uh, much of a poison player, but it can vary from player to player and I'm gonna leave you guys up for a decision for yourself. Next up we'll have a flying robot and as a win condition, I think the flying robot is definitely on the stronger side but uh, as a solitary card it's pretty, I don't know how to rate it, I'm gonna, f I think I'm gonna rate it as an archetype and as an archetype I think it's in a B tier, even though many players are complaining about the phone hut being absolutely a good counter against it, I think the flying robot players are still doing pretty well because there are still many players that don't use a phone hut and you definitely can play uh, around these players. Uh, Flank Robot by itself I don't think is a good card, but especially in combination with Balloon, it's, very, it's still very threatening to your opponent, especially if your opponent doesn't know how to properly defend it, so that's why I'm gonna put it in a B tier for the time being. So next up will be Footman, and 
footmen I think deserve a B-tier spot. Even though they are being uh, countered by a flying bomb or poison, I think footmen are fulfilling a very good role at being a niche card that pretty much also helps a flying robot alive. It's pretty much a very uncanny synergy between these two cards. I think like flying robot without a footman is uh, very vulnerable to anything like bird spammy and since a uh, footman can be split into three footmen on one side and two on the opposite side it creates kind of this safety barrier which can which you can use and obviously viking bird spam deals well with flying robot but there are tricks and footmen pretty much serve as one of them also footmen get a positive trait against a alone viking so that's already a huge plus for the card and that's why i think i'm gonna rate footman as a b tier card next one we're gonna be having a footman keg and i think this spell kind of fell off so i'm gonna just put it in a b tier don't get me wrong it's this spell is still very used it still has uh, its usage but i don't think it's like good compared to a rolling steel or bullets so that's why i'm gonna degrade it in the b tier i think it's better than blitz but la like always there are situations where blitz will be better there are situations where footman kick will be better i personally love to play with this card but statistics uh, prove that they're just more popular uh, small spells and also like uh, at the end of the day it's a spell so I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna like think too much about it. I think just there are better al alternatives uh, in the current meta for a footman keg. So next up we'll be ha looking at a footman hat and I think footman hat will be another F tier card because uh, in a top ladder pretty much no one uses it. If even if someone uses it, it's like for a troll deck or a cheese deck, so like it's like a fun compliment for a deck. So you can kind of clickbait people into thinking that you're using footman hat. But at the same time, your deck is carried by some other interactions. So like foot footman hat is a very nice and defensive resource, but current meta is very offensive and footman hat pretty much doesn't keep up with that. Also. There's a feature that kinda makes the footman hat very situation depending. So most of the cases you want to play a footman hat so that so that either footman hat absorbs the uh, incoming damage and then you get a spawn of the footman and then you get spawn uh, of two footmen from the death and then you have three footmen engaging the attacker. Or you want the first footman to absorb the match for the hut to live longer and then you have two footmen to counter the rest of the push and those situations are very very hard to coordinate especially if your opponent knows about what you're doing he can just spell your footman hut with like flying bomb for instance and your footman hut won't get as much value as it should have also <coughs> Free playing a footman hat is usually a bad case because you still leave one lane vulnerable and the one footman will just die to the towers so yeah. I think the uh, team of balancing did a really good job of reworking the footman hat that it, ha it had kind of its niche usage but right now it's just straight up bad and pretty much no one uses it. So next up we'll be looking at the freeze and I think I'm gonna put a freeze in a D tier, but only because of the usage. Like, freeze is still a very good card on paper, it still can make plays. I enjoy playing freeze when I do, but unfortunately, it's not a good pick for ladder, and this tier list is kinda ladder based. And the thing is, if you're meeting the same people on ladder, you can surprise them one time. But the second time they will be prepared that you have a freeze in your deck and they won't fall for that trick again. So it's a definitely fun card to play against your friends, like to surprise them once or twice. But for laddering, it's a very hard uh, job to get like consistent win rate with the freeze. Next up, we'll be having a general. 
and I'm gonna rate ge the general as a C tier unit because Viking just does so well against it and uh, in general this archetype is very hard to play nowadays so uh, it had uh, better days but unfortunately if your uh, every single opponent has a Viking in the deck it's hard to break through especially if your opponent knows what he's doing which is like keeping the Viking especially for general so that's gonna be a sole reason I'm gonna put a general in the seat here. Next up will be Ghost, and I think Ghost kinda deserves a S tier because of how good he is. I think, as the day of recording, this is the best uh, mini tank in terms of like versatility. Obviously, Swordman is like the best mini tank in uh, terms of stats, but Swordsman is pretty much only used in archetype of defensive decks, and obviously defensive decks separate into many, but it serves only one role where Ghost can be used in bridge spam, in like spell baits, is is pretty much seen in many other decks as well. Also, it's very statistically good and it mm, complements the meta deck, which is Viking. So, I think putting the ghost in the S tier is very fair. Next up will be having a brute, and in my opinion, brute is on the same page as a general. So I'm gonna just put it in a C tier. Very decent win condition but uh, meta circumstances circumstances doesn't support them and I think just landing these two even uh, next to each other will be very fair. Uh, Brute had its better days like a general I think after uh, the nerf to a viking archetype these two will see more usage more often. Next up we'll be having a cemetery and I think like the cemetery will be an A tier win condition. It's very decent in the uh, current meta. It pretty much gets hard countered by poison, and poison is very frequently used. But the thing with uh, cemetery is that it only takes one good connection, and you're uh, set for the rest of the game. So, pretty much getting countered by a poison and uh, taking minus one trade is fine for you if you are taking good trades. Uh, across uh, all the other sectors of the game so cemetery i don't think it's statistically imbalanced or something in fact i think it's one of the most balanced win conditions in the game just the fact that uh, there are better win conditions prevents it from being in like the higher tier next up we're gonna be looking at the gunner and i think the gunner deserves a b tier because Gunner is very good in defensive decks, but that's pretty much it. Like, in a way, I think she's very versatile, but there are better replacements for her if you want to get more aggressive, and we're gonna get to this replay. I mean, actually, we kinda did. You can replace Gunner with Devils, and they will do pretty much the same job. Only thing better for Gunner is that she's more spell resistance. Also, Bomb Girl is very good replacement for Gunner, and she is being seen in very many steel bait, uh, steel baits decks currently running on ladder. And I think like Gunner is a very good card, but a beater is a good uh, place for her because there are just many alternatives, and at the same time, uh, Gunner doesn't have like her own meta deck in the current meta. So next up we'll be looking at the Hill Tiny and pretty much Hill Tiny I'm gonna land it in a D tier and uh, for the reason that it uh, it pretty much has only I mean it has synergy with a Ghost and Thief which are meta but it doesn't have synergy with Vikings so it kind of uh, it kind of doesn't have uh, its own meta deck and all decks that are good with Hill Tiny are bad against Viking, and the card itself isn't also rocking that well, that's why I'm gonna just put it in AD tier. Next up, we'll be looking at the helicopter. So, helicopter, I think it's gonna go into a B tier as, uh, as the same tier as Gunner. It's pretty good, uh, it has pretty good niche, but it's not meta by any means and obviously like 
Many players will run a flying bomb or poison, so they will have a good response against helicopter. The good thing about helicopter is that when you get multiple of them on the map, usually your opponent will have trouble by countering them. That's why, like, many people play flying robot with, I mean, fl helicopter with flying robot or with mirror, so they can just get the most value of the helicopter as it's possible. So, I think it's a very solid pick, but uh, I think even a above average pick, that's why it's going to a B tier. Next up will be Ice Tiny, and I think Ice Tiny will go to a... Mm, I think that's gonna go to a tier as well. I still uh, keep the opinion that uh, Fire Tiny is better than Ice Tiny just because of this interaction, and more probably, Ice Tiny is a solid pick. I absolutely don't hate it, in fact I have many decks with Ice Tiny that I think work better with Ice Tiny than with a Hill Tiny, just because sometimes you don't want to have more offensive presence but defensive safety and at that uh, Ice Tiny is definitely better. That's why I'm gonna just put it in A tier. Next up we're gonna have Lightning and Lightning is getting absolutely outperformed by both Flying Bomb and Poison, and that's why I'm gonna actually put it in a C tier. Even though it's not as commonly used as other spells, I think Lightning uh, has seen a huge usage rise recently, just because the Lightning uh, as a spell does very well against like bridge spammy cards. Sometimes it can just get infinite value on defense, or if you're breaking the offense, and for instance, let's say you're... Uh, you want to get rid of the piercing tar piercing archer like ghost and hit the tower, it's absolutely possible with lightning. Whereas if you were to use a flying bomb, sometimes the troops would be too separated. So it's very situation dependent, but it seems that more and more players are actually using lightning, so I think the C tier is very fair for that card. Next up we'll be looking at a long sword and I think Longsword is in a C tier as well, it's just not a good pick overall, there are better alternatives, that's what I meant, uh, especially like the best uh, alternative for the Longsword is a Drunker, it's pretty much serves the same role, uh, they are static statistically very similar, but the Drunker drops the madness, so it's pretty much uh, more aggressive of the choice and since we have kind of a bridge spam meta it serves a better purpose of doing so. Next card will be a machine gun and I'm gonna actually put a machine gun in a C tier as well because even though machine gun is a pretty niche win condition it can't actually yeah I think I'm gonna put it in a B tier because uh, Machine Gun as an archetype counters the bridge spam, so also Machine Gun recently got a lifespan buff by 5 seconds, which is like a huge buff for a card to give, and even though I wasn't having the trouble against Machine Gun uh, on my other games, it's pretty much probably because I kind of know how to deal with that, but uh, many players may... Uh, uh, may think that machine gun is very strong and I think machine gun is definitely on the stronger side like I think I'm gonna just put it in a B tier uh, because it counters the viking bird spam and that's the pretty the, I, that's the most common deck you'll see on the ladder nowadays except like default deck and 2.6 which I think that counts we kinda count the top ladder decks and maybe some people like close to a top 50. Next one we're gonna be talking about Madness and I think Madness has its niche but it's just not versatile enough to be put higher than a D tier. So the thing with Madness is that uh, it boosts your troops and uh, it makes them go faster and sometimes if your opponent misses some defensive resources uh, they will get overrun. Uh, also, also Madness like pairs well with certain troops. So it's, uh, for instance, it pairs well with Mother Devil and Mother Skeleton because not only they are faster, they also spawn faster. 
and also it pairs well with wind conditions which lack speed. The drawback is that it takes the slot in the deck and also if your opponent realizes that you're playing with Mandis, they'll just pre-place their defenses and it is gonna be very hard uh, for you to break through. Also Madness decks usually don't run a big spell so you kinda rely on overrunning or surprising your opponent than breaking them so breaking with Madness is pretty much impossible that's why I'm gonna rate it pretty low also if you whether your uh, push with Madness worked or not you're gonna have to survive a scary counter push and that's usually a scary part of Madness because it doesn't kill anything in the process similar thing to freeze I think that's why people usually don't use it because like it's kind of a risky card to use but when it pays off it pays off in a big way so I don't I'm not gonna put in F tier it's it has a niche but it's very rare to see next up is a mana collector and I'm gonna put a mana collector in a C tier I think it's a okay card because not many people run EQ and like Earthquake and Digger are the best response against Mana Collector, but uh, many people choose to use the OK response against Mana Collector. And OK response is the Flying Bomb or Poison, and they just give the neutral trait. You get uh, your and your opponent get zero mana, but they get the damage on the tower. If that wasn't the case, I think Mana Collector would be a very good card. Uh, there was a short period of time where people were pairing Mana Collector with Mirror for this particular reason and it was very scary to go against but then if your opponent kinda knows what he's doing he's gonna counter push you on the other side and um, if he survives the counter attack he's gonna be just uh, chilling so I think Mana Collector is definitely an interesting card to play and go against but it's not meta defining, that's why I'm gonna put it in the seat here. Next up, we're gonna have a mirror, and I'm gonna put a mirror in the D tier. And the D tier will be there because uh, mirror is just not having a good usage as a card. Period. I think that's the whole reason I'm gonna put it here. If it was more used, I think the mirror would be a. Uh, good uh, good uh, option to pick because while it doesn't boost your cards uh, after the second play it costs not one mana more but half mana more so usually like uh, certain plays may be very interesting for instance double bullets I think like is the prime example of uh, mirror doing nothing because it doesn't change in directions but double bullets kill a gunner so if you can like clip a building, a gunner and the tower, double bullets is definitely way to go for some cheese decks. Next up we're gonna be having a mortar and I think actually the mortar is the third A tier building. I'm gonna rank mortar above the machine gun even though machine gun is statistically stronger than the mortar I think the mortar is just more versatile, more fun to play and it's just my uh, personal favorite as a building like uh, I said that I love to play a bomb tower above the phone hut but like I prefer to play mortar above the bomb tower because while bomb tower is only defensive mortar also serves as a good secondary win condition and if you can get away with having a slightly worse defense in favor for having another offensive option you should definitely try it next up we're gonna have a mother devil and I'm gonna put a Mother Devil in a C tier. Like, B Town as a whole archetype isn't good right now at all, so I think that reflects on a statistics for a Mother Devil. Also, Poison is very popular and that definitely hurts her performance. Mother Skeleton will fall to the same category, and I'm gonna actually rate the Mother Skeleton to in a C tier because. I don't think she is that bad like people consider, like I've seen people putting in her in a F or in D tier, I think Mother Skeleton is very close to her sister, only thing differing that is that Mother Devil pairs way better 
with madness, while Mother Skeleton, at least from my experience, well, works best with a mana collector. And that's because if you can get like a brute, uh, I mean, get mana collector uh, spelled out, and then you get like two brutes on the board with a Mother Skeleton on one side, it's gonna be very messy for your opponent to defend both sides. Next card we're gonna look uh, for is a Piercing Archer, and I think Piercing Archer will be an A tier card. No questions asked. It's like one of the best supports in the game. It uh, gives uh, a ton of value. I think only drawback of Piercing Archer that kind of balances it out in a way it is it is dying to bullets plus blitz. I don't think it dies to bullets plus cyclone, but I may check that out. If it does, well, <coughs> good thing to know, and maybe new trees will arise. But I think like piercing archer is very solid pick right now, especially because not many people run a flying bomb, and while poison completely kills piercing archer, if it's offensive piercing archer, you get uh, you gotta have to get rid of her a sub. So yeah. That's why I think Piercing Archer is an A tier unit. Speaking of which, I'm gonna put a poison in an A tier. I don't think it deserves the S tier just yet because poison is uh, very similar to Flying Bomb, and since Flying Bomb is an A tier, like I said, it may be a bit biased, but Flying Bomb is my personal favorite between these two, and poison is just a better pick. <coughs> looks like for um, more players uh, on the ladder also like you can play both these spells with a viking bridge pump so i'm not gonna so it's not gonna make too much of a difference that's why i've put them in a same tier because they still are very good and versatile next one will be a missile and i actually think the missile is in a if tier and the reason for that is that it is only seen a classic steel bait, and even in classic steel bait, people are replacing missile with poison or flying bomb because it's just it's just the, the commitment that it's not worth for. Only thing uh, that missile is better than both of these is countering balloon, and since balloon is very niche and still not played at all, I don't think just missile is worth a shot. Also, many steel bait players are not playing like the classical variation. They play the spammier version of a steel bait, which tends to score mo better and just doesn't contain missiles. So it's not only win rate that are lower for a missile than like the other spells. It's also a use rate, and I mean by a lot. I don't want the missile to be buffed, but I think it's a F tier, and I hope it's F tier for good. Next card I'm gonna be rating is Rolling Steel, and I think Rolling Steel deserves an A tier because it's kind of on the same page as Flying Bomb and Poison. It's very frequently used, but it's not like meta defining or something. Obviously, Rolling Steel could be argued that it belongs to S tier because it has the highest use rate in the entire game, but at the same time, I think it's highly inflated by people who just mindlessly copy paste this card not because of its strength but of its historical strength and i think currently bullets are way better choice than rolling steel in almost any circumstance except for like defensive decks and well defensive decks definitely work but like bullets are just way more modern approach to the game that bases on uh, frequently attacking and eventually overrunning your opponent. So I'm gonna put a Rolling Steel in A tier, but uh, I definitely see an argument that it could it could have been an S tier because it uh, pairs with defensive archetypes very well. Next up, we're gonna have a Runners, and I think Runners are okay card but uh, definitely below the average so runners are usually associated with like mid ladder and stuff and partially i agree on that but at the same time runners still have some niche decks which can they can be very 
uh, nice in, for instance like Tree Gunners or some Brute decks, they definitely still find a play. And also runners definitely deal well with, against Bridge Spam, so if they are not Bridge Spam themselves, they will deal against Bridge Spam very well, especially runners get eh, okay trade I guess against Viking on defense, but usually it's more than enough. Next up we're gonna look at the Shield Skeletons and I think Shield Skeletons are like a B tier unit, so Shield Skeletons are very good but they are just bare alternatives. So for instance, if I were to pick a, a 3 mana swarm card, I would rather have a Fawn Horde and I would even more love to have Fawns instead. So Shield Skeletons good pick, but they are just a bare uh, alternatives. That's why they are in a B tier. They are above average card, but they are better, uh, better cards than it in the first place. Next up we will be looking at the Skeletons and I think Skeletons just deserve the A tier just because uh, they are one mana swarm card which has a high DPS. Well, that's it. I don't think they are statistically imbalanced or even close to it but they find their spot in almost any meta. I think they will they would be used by some players even if there was two Skeletons instead of three. Of course Historically we had 4 in the first place, then it was nerfed to 3, and I think they are very balanced A tier card in that regard. They don't go up or down by any means, just staying there menacingly, and they are absolutely fine by themselves. So, next up we're gonna be looking at the Skeleton Keg, and Skeleton Keg I'm gonna actually put in a D tier, because obviously they deal a very good job in... Uh, Steel Bait decks, kind of, but it's pretty much their niche and Steel Bait, I don't feel like it's too good today because like they're good against Viking but they suck against everything else uh, any between, so if you get me like, I don't think counter meta decks that suck against uh, anything else can be counted as a counter meta because, well, uh, it's just a counter deck, it's not like these decks thrive by uh, on their own, so like Steelbait has very many bad matchups and it pretty much takes one Fire Tiny to pretty much ruin your day as a Steelbait player. And Skeleton Keg, I think out of the three uh, win conditions of the uh, Steelbait, is the weakest one. Even after we re reworks, it's very easy to counter it. It is a 3 mana commitment, so you kinda expect something from it, and it just doesn't work out as it uh, was supposed to. Next one we're gonna have a Skeleton Horde, and Skeleton Horde will have a very straight problem. It dies to bullets, it dies to blitz, it dies to one tick of poison, and also it dies to Cyclone so quickly. Cyclone doesn't have too big of a pull strength, but first tick is instantaneous, so if you're playing skill horde against cycle player, you're basically hard counter. That's why I'm gonna just put in a D tier. Obviously, if you're playing against a footman keg, you're gonna have a better time. I'm gonna put just skill horde in a D tier. I think it's not like it needs a buff or something, even though we're giving it a buff eventually. Uh, I think it's just fundamentally flawed card, and that's why it's gonna have a very tough time to see a usage ever again. Next up we're gonna have a Skeleton Hut and I'm gonna put a Skeleton Hut in a C tier because... Actually no, I'm gonna put it in a B tier because it's still used in Splammer 3. So it doesn't have too big of a use because like people are using definitely a Fawn Hut way more often. And I actually am a fan of a Skeleton Hut in this meta because it deals with Viking, it deals with Twins. And the thing is, it just it dies too quickly to Piercing Archer, and that's the like the biggest flaw of a uh, of a Skeleton Hut. That's why I'm gonna put in a B tier, but I think, in my opinion, it's a above average card in this meta. Next up, we have a Steel Hammer, and I'm gonna actually put a Steel Hammer in a C tier because uh, it is good, but once again, it has a better replacement. So 
If I were to play a steel hammer, I would definitely, for instance, play a ghost instead or a swordman, which, like, swordman pretty much is a steel hammer, but one mana cheaper, and it doesn't deal splash damage, but with mini tank it pretty much doesn't matter whether it does cheap uh, splash damage or not. So, yeah, steel hammer will remain in a C tier. Next card will be stone fonts, and I'm actually fan of a stone fonts. I'm gonna put them in a A tier because they are very cheap. They shoot air and they can split. That's pretty much basically anything you want in your cycle deck, except like many people choose fawns or skeletons instead. So like stone fawns, definitely very solid pick, but uh, not the best uh, of them, if that makes sense. They're in the A tier though, so they are very good card in this meta. Next up we have a bone blasters, uh, more known as the terrorists or suicides, and I think I'm gonna put them in a, a B tier, because as the win condition they are not too good by themselves, that's why they are usually paired with digger which is like already bad, or with the bait that isn't like uh, too thriving right now. I think out of the three bait uh, win conditions the bone blasters are definitely the best ones because they are the most flexible ones. They also appear in another archetypes and they're statistically good. J just that, they are very fast, they don't uh, get fully countered by skeletons which is already huge props and I think just good uh, Bomb Blasters player can uh, usually get a upper hand against many uh, good players. So that's why I'm gonna put them in B tier. Next up we have Super Ape and Super Ape is a controversial card. Some people think it's just too easy to play into spammy, some people think that it gets countered by buildings in absolutely trash. But in my opinion, I'm gonna put a Super Ape in a B tier, the same as a Bone Blasters. It's not, too, not a bad card to play in this meta, just because Super Ape players usually tend to uh, be on a very defensive side. And uh, also Super Ape historically scores very well against Viking Bird Spam, so uh, I think that's the only reason I'm putting uh, Super Ape in a, in a B tier, because it actually is a deck that hard counters the Viking Bird Spam. If you search for a good deck against Viking, that's definitely your option. Not 2.6 variant though, because 2.6 is, I think, just too predictable uh, nowadays. It was a good pick before, but since people figured out how to counter this deck with pretty much any possible layout, I think Super Ape Cycle, especially with like EQ, m many people tend to play po uh, Poison with Super Ape, I'm not a huge fan of that because uh, it's just too expensive. E Earthquake pretty much fulfills the same role as a Poison, but doesn't target air. And it's one mana cheaper, and that's already a good synergy for a Super Ape. I think I'm gonna just leave it in a B tier because I think it's an above average card. Next up, we're gonna have a Super Devil, and Super Devil I think can be either in A or B tier, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna leave it in a B tier, obviously after I been, yeah, after Super Ape because it's alphabetical order, I believe it's S U S A. Yeah. Uh, ape is before devil, yeah. So, uh, Super Devil, I think, is a very good card, especially if played in a deck that kinda requires one uh, anti air or something like that. But uh, devils are just better. Uh, th that just that is my opinion. Like devils, uh, pretty much uh, do the job of the Super Devil most of the time. And even though they can be countered by bullets, it's already a uh, thing that you can use to your advantage. So if devils get countered by bullets, just throw more counters to bullets in your deck, and you have kind of a bullet bait. While with super devil, your opponent usually will just uh, will just snipe it with something. And yeah, super devil can be very good, but uh, in the in this meta, I think it's not enough, especially because it's just too slow. It cannot chase units and. It uh, gets uh, kited very well. Uh, next up will be Swordman and I'm gonna put a Swordsman in A tier because it's a very good mini tank and 
it's it pretty much fits into any defensive deck and also it appears in uh, some decks that counter viking bridge spam especially viking gets good traits both against ghost and thief which are like pillars of viking bridge spam deck so i think uh, for that sole reason swordsman will be an a tier is also a very good response uh, against any card in viking bridge spam archetype except for the viking itself so yeah that's why he's gonna be an a tier v very good and versatile card next one we're gonna be t-rex and i'm gonna put a t-rex in a uh, i'm gonna actually put it in a a tier because well paired with cyclone this uh, card combo can pretty much stop any push also t-rex is very versatile and is seen in pretty much any archetype except like defensive i mean except defensive decks uh, now I've uh, remembered that Splemetry is a defensive deck, but it's like the control deck, not a uh, defensive cycle, so if you know what I mean. Also the T-Rex sometimes is being seen in a Viking Bridge Spam, and that's already a huge plus for a card if it's seen in this archetype. So T-Rex very solid uh, option in this meta, that's why I'm gonna leave it in an A tier. Next up we have Twins, and I think... Twins are the best win condition in the game by the time of the recording. They just have so much HP that uh, footmen very often connect to the tower instead of the troops that are just trying to surround it after the connection. They, they are just uh, they just need a nerf uh, if that wasn't obvious in the first place. But at the same time, they pretty much appear in uh, not only bridge spam but also like sometimes you will see people trying to run twins instead of super ape with some kind of success and yeah i think just this card is very good uh, for the time of the recording and kind of carries the uh, theme of like birds one being good and and viking being a, a good archetype as a whole so we are down to last four cards and first one will be fifth i'm gonna rank a fifth in a a tier it's in my opinion, the best offensive card in the game, uh, I mean, I've mentioned that Twins are very good offensively, but like, Twins are win condition, it is a card which can deal with both troops and buildings. So, Twin, I mean, uh, Thief, is a very good at blinking. That's his main purpose, but his blinks are so fast and sometimes so unpredictable. If you can, for instance, get a Thief on the side of the opponent and you can get like one prediction it's a guaranteed connection because a uh, fifth blink so fast it pretty much doesn't uh, t take much also like um, fifth is in a viking bridge some obviously so it's gonna be rated very high and yeah let's say i'm gonna put a fifth in a tier next one we're gonna have a three gunners and many, pe many people have uh, different opinions on three gunners. I think they are very balanced right now. I think just below average because like everyone uses flying bomb or poison. If that wasn't the case, three gunners definitely would have been in a B tier or even A tier in some rare cases. But in my opinion, they are still a very viable pick to go. If you are not fighting against uh, like some defensive decks that have these spells and just cycle them on your towers and clipping a mana pump plus three gunners sometimes i think that's definitely a way to go so we're down to a last two cards and surprise surprise it's the viking himself i didn't think uh, previously that viking was a broken card itself but after playing against it and with it it's so fast so i'm gonna just put it in the ace tier i definitely think viking itself as a card needs a nerf and yeah, as you can see, three cards of five in the S tier are uh, in one deck, and that's definitely good. Also, there are players that use bullets instead of blitz in the Viking Bridge Song, which just adds the adds to the injury, and that's that's just that's just it. Viking very meta pick right now. If you don't want to like fight against viking and try to counter it you can just become a viking player and have a ton of success on ladder it's very strong archetype right now not many people also know how to counter it so it's definitely a way to go if you want to push fast 
and the last card will be a Necromancer. I think the Necromancer buff was actually very decent. I'm gonna put a Necromancer. Yeah, I'm gonna actually put Necromancer in an A tier just because the Necromancer right now has actual DPS and Necromancer was already fine against cards like I mean against decks like Bait or Splamatory, but right now. Necromancer is just good. It can be used in a, a bridge from archetype by itself, like instead of devils even, to just uh, punish your opponents by playing, for instance, skeletons too high, or uh, just by uh, threatening them that if they play skeletons too high, you will just play Necromancer on this end. This threat is usually more important than an execution, and that's why I think Necromancer kind of deserves this A tier, because it just pairs so well with offensive strategies like viking and yeah i think that's gonna be it uh, from me today that's gonna be a final tier list uh, of boom arena make sure if you agree or disagree or pretty much any card included here obviously that was a longer video so i'm gonna make some timestamps timestamps so you can navigate the video way easier and yeah that's gonna be it for today i hope you guys enjoyed the watch time and yeah i'm gonna see you guys in the next episode Abu Marina.